I was a very happy Nest Cam user for a really long time until I started running into some issues that were uh, making me slowly go absolutely insane. The first of which was the fact that my Nest Cam had gotten really bad about letting people walk right up to my mailbox, right in my uh, detection zone, and not detecting them, resulting in me missing packages that needed to be signed for when I was sitting maybe 15, 20 feet from uh, where this person was standing. If they didn't knock on the door or something loudly enough, I just didn't see them. The Nest Camera didn't think that was a person. I would miss that opportunity. That was very, very annoying. That was beginning to drive me a little crazy. But then sort of had a, a last straw kind of moment when my backyard camera, after being in use for a few years, uh, spontaneously died. I then thought, well, whatever, I'll just go buy another one and keep using my Nest cameras because I've used them for so long now. I go to purchase the thing and I discover that these new cameras require you to use the new app. And the new app, if you use your old cameras in it, you can't actually scrub back to see what's happened in the past. You have to switch to the Nest app. So now I'm looking at a situation where I got to use the new app for the new camera, old app for the old camera. So I got frustrated and I pulled them all down and I went on to Amazon and I looked at some reviews and I saw the WiseCam V3 for $35. It has the ability to plug in an SD card and no subscription required at that point. So I ordered a whole bunch of them. And in this video, I'm going to talk about what it is like to use the WiseCam V3 as someone who was used to paying, I think, like $120 a year for all of my Nest cameras to be able to rewind and do all that good stuff. What's it like to use this camera with no subscription? There are plenty of reviews around, but nobody really talks about what it's like to have no subscription. You can pay $2 a month, I think is what it is, to have the cloud storage. But what's it like to put an SD card in there? and use them like that. First thing first, this is the WiseCam B3. It is very, very simple. It is a very lightweight, very small little camera. I think it looks okay. It's definitely uh, not a crazy design. You can see on the bottom here, there's a setup button. It is dead simple to set up. You load up the app, you click on the setup button, it beeps and the app walks you through it and you're set up in no time at all. There's also a flap here that if I could get open up, maybe, you can see there is an SD card in there because each camera can house an SD card and that's where things can be stored to. It's great. You have a normal USB connector there that uh, it comes with a six foot cable and a brick. Plug it in there, you're off and running. You can obviously set it up on a table. It is magnetic though. And this is something that I really love. If you want to mount this thing anywhere you want to mount it, this is all you need. Attach this bit of 3M adhesive there, peel off the other side, stick it to whatever surface you want to attach this thing to, and then stick it to it because it's magnetic installation anywhere you want it is absolutely dead simple takes no drilling uh, and it works really well i've actually got one outside attached to some siding uh, and it's fine it's held on really really well so that is the camera itself but what about the act of actually using the thing and how do you kind of get it working with that sd card luckily it is extremely simple to get working so once you get all your cameras set up this is kind of the look that you're going to get let's just pick the uh, front porch camera and if you touch your settings cog up there in the corner and then you go to i believe it's under advanced settings you'll see record to micro sd card is already ticked by default at that point you can hit manage your micro sd card and you'll see i have a 32 gig card and it reads it as 29.72 but that's what it's going to show a beautiful thing about this is you don't have to manage your storage, right? You don't have to go in and clear it every so often. Whenever the old stuff gets stored, there's none of room. The old stuff gets kicked off. The new stuff gets added on to the front. So it's just continuously sort of cycling what is on the card for you. On this size card, I think I'm getting like three or four days worth of rewinding, which is more than enough for me. If we go back here, we'll kind of look at some of the settings here just so that you can kind of understand what you have here. So detection settings, you have the ability to change what level, what uh, you know, sort of intensity of motion is gonna be required to pick up something. Uh, sound and motion have their own thing. You can have detection zones. So I don't care if anything happens out here. We have rabbits. I don't care if a rabbit walks through my yard. What I do care about is if someone approaches my mailbox or my or my porch. And one great thing about this first is the Nest Cam. Not only will the Nest Cam sometimes just not tell me that it saw a person, 
a lot of the time when it did tell me, it was like way, way after this person had already left with the wise cam. I'm getting that notification. I swear to you within 30 seconds of them being here. There's been times I've gotten the notification, gone out to check the mail to grab the, whatever they put in the mailbox. And the mailman who actually has to physically walk through my yard in this neighborhood is like one house down. They've barely, they've barely, you know, walked 20, 30 feet by the time I've already got to my mailbox. It is much, much quicker. And you can dial that into your heart's content really, really nice. So under event recording, when you first get your camera, you're probably gonna have two weeks of their plus service uh, as like a trial. Under smart detection, this is kind of what you're paying for. Not just the cloud storage, so you don't have to have an SD card, but also the ability to detect a person, a pet. So it won't just say motion, it'll actually say we saw a person or a pet. That's where you can toggle that stuff if you want to pay for that. If not, you're just going to say to want to see motion, to want to hear sound, that's going to be actually giving you notifications, and that's it. Personally, for me, it's fine because I just want to see is a person at my mailbox. I don't need to know that they are a person, just that there's motion at my mailbox. That's only going to really be one thing, so that's totally fine. No need to pay that subscription. But a cool thing is you could have no subscription all over your house and just pay for it on one camera. Like, let's say there's one camera. You want to know if it's a person or a pet. Well, two bucks a month, uh, and you can do that. Under notifications here, you can kind of dial that in a little bit. I, you know, notifications on or off broadly, but then do I want to get notified about motion or about sound? Under alarm settings, it'll actually listen for the default tone of smoke alarms and carbon dioxide alarms, and it will give you an alert based on if it heard that or not. That's kind of an interesting thing to have. Under advanced settings, you can mess with your night vision. You can see what sorts of things are uh, potentially on there that you might want to be able to use. And then a cool thing under device info, you can actually see what your Wi-Fi signal strength is, which is pretty useful because you're going to want to have a strong Wi-Fi signal. I had to kind of move. I have not just a router, but a satellite. I had to kind of reposition some things to get better signal uh, for this to work properly on the backyard camera. So you can use that to kind of trial and error that situation. Okay, so in terms of the app, what are some things that are different, worse, better than something like I was experiencing on Nest? So the first thing I discovered that I don't love is the fact that on your home screen, all you get are still images. And as you can see, unless it's very dark in my backyard for some reason, uh, we only get still images of the last time we opened up the camera. So if I go into the backyard camera, it will connect. You can see how long it takes. It takes a little bit of a second sometimes. And there you go. Now, if I go back, you'll see that that is now the screen that you're going to be seeing. So I really like the ability on my Nest camera to open it up and to just see all of my cameras either live. If I was on Wi-Fi, if I was on mobile data, it seemed like it would only show me like updated frames every few seconds, which that was fine as well. It was nice to just see that live update. Now I have to physically click on one of the cameras to be able to see what was going on. Now, the way that I kind of get around that is by using their events tab. So if we click on that, you're going to see an ad that pops up every so often that wants you to subscribe. I wish that would just go away because I'm tired of seeing that. If we go back into it though, you will see recent events. So 246, it saw motion in the living room and it will put a little green box around what motion it saw. Now with the subscription, if I were to click on that, it would actually start playing a video showing me like what that movement was. It looks like my TV just turned itself off after a while and that's what it picked up. With no subscription and only using an SD card, you're only gonna get a still image. Oh no, that sounds terrible. It's not that bad though. Cause you can simply click playback down there and it will pull it off of your SD card and it will play back that bit that it saw motion on. And as you can see here, it was simply picking up motion on the television. Now, I'm not getting a notification of this, right? It's just there in the events list. I can go back by 30 seconds, four by 30 seconds, turn sound off or on, take a screenshot of that. One of my favorite features is I can just click record. On Nest, if I, there's a clip that I wanted to save, you would get to that moment around it, you would hit save clip and it would just grab time before and after that it thought was what you wanted and save it. It sucked, it was terrible. This way I can just hit record and then hit stop when I'm done and there's what I've saved. It works so much better. So while I can't see live images of every camera, I can really quickly go into this and see when I saw motion. Here's the backyard camera at uh, 2 a and it saw the leaves over there moving. So let's go to playback and maybe we had some wind or something. Yeah, had some wind and that was blowing around. So you're still gonna be able to see everything. 
And again, you could go in and paint a zone and say, I don't really wanna see those leaves moving. I don't really care about that. You can also go into your cameras and say, I just wanna see what I saw moving in the backyard. I just wanna see movements in that backyard area. And then you could scroll until you see what you're looking for. Okay, well, there's my dog. Let's go to the playback and let that play. And you're gonna see playing locally. This is not coming from the cloud. It's coming from my SD card there's the motion that I was looking for. Now you will see here that there's a five minute cool down. It saw motion at 225, and then the next time I picked it up was 238, but evidently there was motion in between there, but without a subscription, it won't give you a event on this screen. Now that doesn't mean that I can't simply click on it, go into playback, and then scroll forward in time and then see whatever I wanna see. You're just not gonna see it in the events. So one of my biggest use cases for my Nest camera, probably the reason I really had it, is because I'm kind of paranoid when I'm away from home. I have dogs, I have pets, and I want to be able to check on them when I'm not around. So before, I would open up my Nest camera, and I would see all my cameras all there playing somewhat live, and I can just go, okay, there's my dog, they're okay. I can't really do that. So now what I do is I click on the events, and I simply scroll down until I saw one of my dogs for the last time, and I go, okay, well, 12.33, there he was, and he was okay. Do I wanna click on this and watch and see where he goes, what he's doing? So I can, I can achieve the same thing. I think that's when we got home and he was excited to see us. There you go. So I think you know I can still achieve exactly the same sorts of things in a slightly different way, but the difference here, and I haven't really stated this too, too clearly, is that when we're talking about these cameras, this is $35. Now, when I bought these, I also bought this, two packs of 32 gig cards. So $13.40, $34 per camera. And I bought enough for six cameras and six SD cards. I think I wanted to be in like $260 or something like that. These Nest cameras are $100 a pop. I had six of them. They're in a bag over in the floor now. I'm not, I'm not using them anymore. So to have the same coverage with the Nest cameras, you know, you're talking about well over $600, right? Probably getting close to seven, plus $120 plus a year to have the abilities to do things I'm talking about. The Wise cameras, six cameras, six SD cards, less than $300, and I'm done. I'm done paying for anything. That's it. It's over with. Now, in terms of the actual video quality, here is a sample from in my backyard, and you may be able to hear this as well. Quickly playing some fetch with the new pup, and you can see, I mean, look, is this incredible video quality? No, is it close to the nest quality? Yeah, it's, it's really, really quite similar, and it's definitely more than good enough to do the job. I should also mention that the actual microphones on the device they're not that great. They do miss quite a bit of stuff. You can hear the squeaky ball there that my dog had coming through, but you know, if we're just talking or something that far away, probably not really gonna pick that up. You can speak through your phone and output through those uh, the speaker on the camera, and that's actually pretty good. It might actually be louder than on my first gen Nest cameras. But just keep in mind, if you wanna hear what someone else is saying, they're gonna need to be within just a few feet of the camera for that to be viable. So there you go. I think that's about as much information as I can possibly uh, move over to your brain uh, from mine about how these cameras function, in particular how they function with no subscription using that SD card. If you want to check these cameras out yourself, there will be a link in the description. I'll also link to the SD cards that I went ahead and purchased so that you may be able to replicate the same scenario. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.